Well, I feel like it was only a matter of time before Donald Trump began his all-out assault on Ron DeSantis, or should I say Ron DeSanctimonious. He's really going with that for the nickname, I guess, which is not very good. Either way, he's basically declaring war on Ron DeSantis, and I think that part of what is really eating him away is how right-wing media, primarily the Murdoch Empire, the Wall Street Journal, Fox News, has very quickly turned on Donald Trump following the midterm election. So a lot of right-wing pundits currently, uh, not just the Murdoch Empire, but the Daily Wire as well, they've essentially accused Donald Trump of sinking the Republican Party's chances, and many of them have pointed to Ron DeSantis as the model for success. And Trump, knowing that everyone is kind of aggravated with him currently, can't just shut his mouth. So instead, what is he going to do? He's going to blow up and officially go after Ron DeSantis. So he wrote a very lengthy thread about Ron DeSantis on Truth Social, and this is what he says. Now that the midterms are over and a success, hilarious, News Corp, which is Fox, The Wall Street Journal, and the no longer great New York Post is all in for Governor Ron DeSanctimonious, an average Republican governor with great public relations who didn't have to close up his state but did, unlike other Republican governors whose overall numbers for a Republican were just just average, middle of the pack, including COVID, and who has the advantage of sunshine, where people from badly run states up north would go no matter who the governor was, just like I did. Ron came to me in desperate shape in 2017. He was politically dead, losing in a landslide to a very good agriculture commissioner, Adam Putnam, who was loaded up with cash and great poll numbers. Ron had low approval, bad polls, and no money, but he said that if I would endorse him, him, he could win. I didn't know Adam, so I said, let's give it a shot, Ron. When I endorsed him, it was as though, to use a bad term, a nuclear weapon went off. Years later, they were the exact words that Putnam used in describing Ron's endorsement. He said, I went from having it made with no competition to immediately getting absolutely clobbered after your endorsement. I then got Ron by the star of the Democratic Party, Andrew Gillum, who was later revealed to be a crackhead. Nice that he adds that, of course, uh, by having two massive rallies with tens of thousands of people at each one. I also fixed his campaign, which had completely fallen apart. I was all in for Ron, and he beat Gillum. But after the race, when votes were being stolen by the corrupt election process in Broward County, and Ron was going down 10,000 votes a day, along with now Senator Rick Scott, I sent in the FBI and the U.S. attorneys, and the ballot theft immediately ended just prior to them running out of the votes necessary to win. I stopped his election from being stolen. And now, Ron DeSanctimonious is playing games. The fake news asks him if he's going to run if President Trump runs, and he says, I'm only focused on the governor's race. I'm not looking into the future. Well, in terms of loyalty and class, that's really not the right answer. This is just like 2015 and 2016, a media assault collusion when Fox News fought me to the end until I won, and then they couldn't have been nicer or more supportive. The Wall Street Journal loved low-energy Jeb Bush and a succession of of other people as they rapidly disappeared from sight, finally falling in line with me after I easily knocked them out one by one. We're in exactly the same position now. They will keep coming after us, MAGA, but ultimately we will win, put America first, and make America great again. So there is a lot to unpack there. Essentially, he's claiming that he made Ron DeSanctimonious, and people aren't moving to Florida because he's turned this into a Republican utopia. Really, sunshine is the reason that people are moving to Florida. So he's like trying to dismantle all of the positives, according to Republicans, for Ron DeSantis. And that was pretty brutal. I mean, again, this is a head on attack of Ron DeSanctimonious. And again, I cannot understand why he's going with Ron DeSanctimonious. It's just shocking to me. Now, there have been many, many figures on uh, the right who are not happy with Donald Trump right now. Tim Pool tweeted out that Trump is finished um, after somebody told him to shut up because he decided to, uh, I guess, compare his performance in Florida to Ron DeSantis' performance in Florida. On top of that, you have individuals like Matt Walsh essentially going after Trump, saying that the only Republican Party that's doing well is the GOP of Florida and everyone else nationally. It's just bad. Leadership is bad, essentially pointing the finger at Donald Trump. So as right-wing media turns on Donald Trump, as everyone points the finger at him, he's feeling the heat. And 
as Trump does, he uh, likes to go on the offensive. So I don't know if Ron DeSantis is going to respond. But if Ron DeSantis does not come out and challenge Trump in uh, 2024, then it's a huge beta move. And I think that it will actually undermine the appeal that he has. Because currently, according to Republicans, he's this tough guy who isn't afraid to take on corporations and isn't afraid to take on the woke establishment. But if he fails to take on Donald Trump, I don't think that that's going to be a good look. So either way, what Trump is doing here is good because what he's uh, causing is cracks within the aggregate GOP coalition. We're seeing factionalization and people getting on the DeSantis side and people getting on the Trump side. Carrie Lake, for example, she's taking shots at Ron DeSantis publicly uh, by claiming that the MAGA faction, uh, you know, isn't as successful as the DeSantis faction. Case in point. We're not going to let them take the fire out of our belly. And so they slow roll the results. You know, Ron DeSantis goes out, gives his big speech, and then they want to make it look like the Trump Republicans don't have a chance. We do. We're going to win. I'm 100 percent sure of that. I think that Blake may even win with the look of what is left to be counted. So when you have these lines being drawn very clearly, it's going to get ugly and I think that this is great. Listen, I've said this before, but I think that it would be beneficial for democracy itself if someone were to challenge Trump in a GOP primary and beat him. It doesn't matter who that is, because we know what Trump's going to do. He's going to cry fraud. And then when you tell a majority of the GOP base who just nominated someone who they're enthusiastic about that that was the result of fraud, then it makes his other claims of fraud look stupid and that's really the only way that i can see the gop base moving away from this whole big lie situation because they're not going to move away from that lie uh based on common sense or logic they're going to do it uh, move away from it to be clear if they're insulted so i think that what trump is doing now is good i want him to stoke the anger of the gop base who likes desantis i want them to clash i want them to fight because them fighting is just good for democracy overall. So let the games begin. 2024 is already in action. And uh, Trump is not taken kindly to Ron DeSantis stepping on his toes. And the media siding with Ron DeSantis. So grab your popcorn, folks. Because this is going to be very interesting to watch this shit show. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.